Is there a strategy that'll help you grow your company faster? CEO Sales Strategies is an investigative business podcast for entrepreneurial people who never stop asking questions. Highly acclaimed sales revenue growth expert, Doug C. Brown, interviews CEOs, business owners, and professionals who serve them to uncover and share actionable tips and methods behind their bulletproof sales strategies. Topics covered on the show include their failures, struggles, secrets, and processes that help them succeed in selling millions to billions of dollars of their products and services, all with the sole aim of helping you grow your business. If you are eager to know the most effective sales secrets from the A players of the game, then the CEO Sales Strategies podcast is certainly the place to be. Hey, this is Doug C. Brown with the CEO Sales Strategies podcast, bringing you an excellent guest. Her name is Sarah Jolly Jarvis, and she owns a company called Selling Without Sleaze. I brought her on here because she's an expert on and around models and business models and how you should use your model, how you should not use your model. And is your model actually serving you in business or is that actually holding you from going where you want to go, whether it's professionally or personally? And we talk a lot about utilization of time and we talk a lot about how do you want your life to really be professionally and personally? And are you building your business around your life? Or are you building your life around your business? Because this is where business models uh, get you stuck. You're not clear in the beginning. Then the second part is how do you build processes and systems into the business model to kind of free you up? Because the number one and number two complaint of all entrepreneurs I have heard over the last 30 years, number one is I want to make more money. I want to grow my company. Number two is I want to work smarter, not harder. I'm tired. I'm not leveraged. And, you know, the business just feels heavy on me. I'm, I'm kind of got my, uh, you know, my cart on my back versus the cart on the ground and I'm sitting on it and I'm, I'm able to drive the cart, if you will. So pay close attention to the time conversation that she and I are having. It's, you know, when, when that comes up amongst, you know, very successful people and they go, oh my gosh, no, I don't want to block or manage time. I don't want to do these things. It's kind of an immediate pushback for a lot of people because they're so busy running in the business versus being able to work strategically. They're doing tactical play. They're not spending enough personal time. And what happens in that case is life just goes by, right? And then you wake up one day and you're like, ah, I want to sell my business, but you haven't built it to be able to exit. So you don't get the multiple or people don't want to buy it. Or if you do get some type of multiple, you get the average type of multiple, like 4.7 times EBITDA or something like that. Without further ado, let's go talk to Sarah about this. Here we go. Sarah, welcome to the CEO Sales Strategies Podcast. I'm so grateful you're here. Thanks for being oh, here. Oh, thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. Yes, and for those who don't know where you're from, why don't you tell them where you're from? Just so. so I am based in Warwick, which is um, right in the middle of England. So, so yeah, UK. So slightly uh, different area from you guys. It's a really nice place if you've ever been to the UK, folks. So I highly recommend it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Lots of castles. We've got loads of castles around us. <laughs> tons of castles and tons of other stuff too. So, <laughs> and, and it doesn't get as cold as it does in most other places in the in the in the winter time. That's what I've noticed. So that, that's true. It also doesn't get as hot in the summer either. So yes. we're kind of like it just drizzles basically, but it's very green most of the time. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about business models and current business models that are not sustainable today. And if they're mm -hmm. not set up appropriately, a business model will allow somebody to more so struggle and maybe even burn out over the process. Um, so yep. why, you, why are business models so important? The right one anyways. Um, well, I think it's it, it's around making it, it's a sustainability. So I think, you know, you've really touched on it is that if you haven't got the right structure in place, if you haven't got the right model for you, then you are going to end up running yourself ragged, um, doing stuff that you weren't necessarily, you're not necessarily good at, um, you don't necessarily enjoy. Um, and so, you know, you can end up evolving and, and kind of going with the business, which, which is, you know, you're listening to your market, et cetera, et cetera. But you can end up in a very different place from where you were wanting to end up um you know it is good it's helpful to be intentional with stuff um if you've got more of a plan then you can see if how how on course of course you are um and you know and how much that that fits with actually where you want to be 
Um, I work with lots of people who have kind of found themselves in a position where their business isn't sustainable. Um, and, you know, they are no longer happy in that environment or they're no longer um, comfortable with the level of stress that's involved. So it's interesting to me because all the years I've been doing this, there's two two major things that come out when I ask business owners, you know, about their business. And the the first is they always say they want to grow their revenues, right? They're just, they want to sell more. That, that's what that's the first. The second one is they want to work less. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they're stressed. They want to figure out how not to work so hard. You know, how do I work easier than uh, and work smarter than, than yeah. harder, so to speak? And I think this business model, uh, based on what I know, and I'd love your feedback on this, is what kind of gets people to work harder, not smarter, if the, if the model is not the right one. Is that yeah. is that the case? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. It, it, the thing is, is it's it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because lots of people come to me with the whole, I know, I, I normally want to increase my revenue or, or at least have it more predictable. Um, but at the same time, I, I want to be working less. I want that balance. And it's like, well, you know, it, you can appreciate that a lot of the time you need to put the work in to get it in a position where you can then start start taking a bit more of a step back. Um, and so the two things aren't necessarily... <laughs> go go hand in hand and um, particularly not in the short term um but um but yes definitely you end up and and not necessarily as you say it gets harder um and, and a lot of the time when you start looking at the activity that's going on um yeah it's not the smartest level of activity it's it's not something that um you know you you look at it and think oh you could tease this off you actually is there any value in you doing that and that's what i find a lot with smaller businesses is like your customers don't care who sends the invoice. They don't care who does the admin. Um, you know, that's not the place where you add value. And so it's looking at actually where where do I need to be? Where do I need to be showing up? And where can somebody else potentially, um, with either better skill sets or more cost effective, um, take over that kind of activity? So turn it into a system versus just uh, <clears throat> a sole proprietorship, if you will. Yeah, I think the thing is, is particularly if you've, run your business you you've set it up it, it's obviously been you from the beginning but taking those components away and getting somebody else to do that that's a different skill set in itself um and when you start with processes you know processes and procedures people like <laughs> regularly just close over they're like oh i don't want to be doing that I, I don't want somebody sat there like you know literally or for remotely um looking at what i'm doing and putting it out into a process um, and, and it seems like it's not money for old rope, but it's not something that anyone gets excited about. Right. It's a bit, right. Like, it's a bit like having your house rewired. I mean, like, <laughs> who cares? <It> like, <laughs> you don't, you don't, you know, you don't switch on the electric and be like, oh, wow, that's much more effective or, you know, it's doing something it, was, it wasn't doing before. You know, it's doing exactly the same thing, um, but it's a better system. And I think that that's, that's the issue is it's not as exciting as some of the other purchases and investments you can make in your business. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But the reality, of, though, you can you can get a better quality light switch so this lights go on automatically. You can get yeah. something that's you know like they call it a decor switch in the United States, which you just it's a lot easier to flip the switch. It's not that little toggle switch, right? There's a lot, a lot of little different ways of yeah. making that lighting experience more enjoyable. Yeah. And so I want to I want to step back and say okay. Companies who are starting or companies who are, you know, far down the line, right? I mean, there's a different thing, but the the premise seems to be the same. If you're going to get leverage in your business, from what I'm hearing you say, one has to create process around everything in order to kind of get that, or most things, let's put it that way, right? Um, You know, I I did one thing with a, a... an entrepreneur one time that that they had a sizable company, right? It was almost a hundred million dollar company. And he's like, I, uh, I go out and I get uh, coffee twice a day for the employees. And I said, uh, what is that costing you? And he goes, nothing. I just go out and get coffee. It costs me the coffee. I said, let's figure out what you make and what your company makes per hour. And let's figure out how much time you're spending out going to get coffee. And let's figure out what that cost you. And it was darn close to a million dollars a year 
when we figured yeah. out the numbers, he was spending about three hours a day going, I don't get coffee, you know, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't take that long to get coffee. But then he got caught up with other people and he's socializing and doing all that other stuff. Now, A, he could use his time back. B, uh, I asked him, I said, can't we hire a full-time assistant just to go get coffee? I mean, I'm sure we could pay $40,000 a year, yeah. right? And so the reason I bring that up is because a lot of people don't think of all those little small processes as eating up their time or, or eating up their revenue in company. And, you know, you have a company called selling without sleaze, which I love um, <laughs> the name of it. And so let's, let's step back. Let's start with the person. I'm just starting my company because a lot of them go, well, then I'll just outsource everything. I'll just put it all into a process and I, I have to do nothing. And I don't believe that's realistic. I've never started a company where that ever worked. How about you? <laughs> I, I've heard of them. I've heard of ones which are quite quick to, you know, they're basically just taking orders and everything else is just drop shipped and implemented for them elsewhere. But yeah, in general, yeah. I mean, when you hear of these things, it's it's normally because it's the anomaly, not the norm, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and what I find is that when you hear about those things, they're usually highly financed companies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they yeah. they got VC money, venture capitalist money, or yeah. <clears throat> private funding of some sort. And they're like, hey, well, let's just set it all up as a system in the beginning. But if we're starting a big business organically and we're funding it organically, we don't have that kind of cash to throw at it. What do I do to start process? Because even if we're a larger company, I suspect the process is somewhat similar. What do I do? The nuts and bolts like, OK, I'm a, I'm a person starting out. Or I've got a small company, I've got, you know, I don't know, eight employees. And I want to now create process because darn it, I'm going out and getting coffee all the time, or I'm <laughs> I'm doing, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm the one who's dealing with the, you know, ordering things from the you know the office supply store or whatever, right? So what do they do? Can you kind of give like a roadmap in some capacity? So um, I'm a big fan of time tracking and then time blocking. So you've got to understand where is that time going? Um, and the amount of people who said to me, oh, you know, I'm a slave to my business. All I do is work all the time. And then I've got them doing that exercise. And it's just amazing how actually <laughs> if, if, if your business was your boss, um, how unhappy they would be with the amount of time you're committing to that business. Um, and I think that's the problem is, is particularly when you set up your own business, it becomes part of your life and it's very difficult to separate the two. And so, you know, you've got it now with people who work from home and are like, oh, I keep putting the washing on between calls and stuff like that. And it's like, well, then you're not actually focused. It's not focused time. And it's it's well, I think when you've got that opportunity to work yourself, um, it's something to celebrate those times when you can do stuff that you wouldn't get away with with if you had a boss um but then it's being aware of the fact that you're doing them and and kind of celebrating and and, and reminding yourself that this is a perk um because i think if you are telling yourself i'm all i'm doing is working all the time all i'm doing is working um and you're not pointing out those moments where actually you're getting that time that you wouldn't necessarily get otherwise um it, it begins to make you appreciate actually i'm not working all the time it gives you a bit, bit better perspective on it um and so you know understanding where your time goes then you can start to highlight areas like the going out for coffee where that's just not something that it doesn't make business sense um and and that's when i'd start to say to people you know look is is this part of your role or is this part of like your sort of personal time um, and I think once you start sort of allocating it and, and se separating it out into the different um, aspects of your role, um, even if you've got a team, I've had clients do this with a team because I've been like, what are your team doing? Um, you know, are the job, even basic stuff, are the job, you know, there's no job description. It's kind of those roles have evolved as somebody's come on and they've helped and then they've got, you know, they've enjoyed doing one aspect of their role. They've started doing that aspect and they've brought somebody else in to do some another aspect. And you end up with this organization where you don't have clarity on you kind of all muck in, but mucking in only works to a certain extent and it only works with certain personality types. Um, and so then you've got, you know, you've got that clarity. So what, who's doing what? Because until who, you know, who does what, how you can't even hope to 
put processes and procedures in place because you've got no idea what what's valuable, what you need to be doing, what you don't need to be doing. And I think it's a little bit like checking your account, seeing what's going out of it and thinking, do I actually need all these subscriptions? Um, it's quite a cleansing experience because you can look at what you do in your role. You can look at what others do and think, you know what, we don't need to be doing this. What What is this bringing us? And I'm, I'm a big fan of always looking back at the numbers. The numbers tell you, um, you know, where your business is at, how profitable an activity is. Um, and when you start looking at those numbers and understanding the cost that's going into these different activities, you begin to understand, is it actually worthwhile doing some of these activities? Um, and just because you've always done them doesn't mean that it makes business sense to continue doing them. We're speaking with Sarah Jolly Jarvis. She owns a company called Selling Without Sleeves. We're talking about business models and business systems, how they can free you or how they can tether you down. And um, all right, I'm going to go to time time tracking, right? Because if I'm a listener right now listening and I heard I got to track my time, I'm going to go, no, 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 no. That's the last thing I want to do, right? Um, <laughs> So you've kind of got to ask yourself why you don't want to then though, because there's so much tech out there now to help you. Yeah, but I, um, I just don't have time. I'm so busy. I'm <laughs> running in different places, right? You, you've got tech. You've got tech. If you're doing it mostly on your computer, yeah. you've got technology that will, there's an app, um, <clears throat> which don't ask me what it is. I'll have to get back to you. Um, but my <laughs> husband uses it because he's a bit of a procrastinator at times. Um, and it tells you what activities so you can actually allocate. If you say Facebook, they can allocate that to marketing. Um, so he does it with his lead gen business. So you're looking at um, time in Facebook manager, ads manager, that kind of stuff. Um, even certain like Google chat apps and things like that, it will allocate them to client time. Um, it, it's very smart. So it just sits behind and, and 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 gathers data in the background. Oh, okay, that makes it a little easier on my life, but it now, is a lot. Yeah. So I track my time now. Uh, there was a gentleman Ryan who was on a on the one of my podcast episodes, and <clears throat> he said something that really I've kind of adapted. Right, you you can only track you can track your time in even fifteen minute blocks. You don't have to go like you know go from nine oh, a.m. Yeah. to yeah. six p.m. or whatever, yeah. right? But in that 15 minute block, you break it down into three sections, strategic, mm -hmm. tactical, and personal. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I like that, Sarah, because I'm, I'm by nature lazy, right. And, and, and I'm busy. Right. So, uh, so I can do that. I can break it down into 15 minutes and I can look at it. And if it's, if it's strategic, great, I should be doing it right. As the, the runner of the company. Now, if I'm starting out, of course, I'm doing everything. But the reality is we I got to get rid of the tactical things yeah. so that I have more strategic and personal time uh, in my life. And so I like that. And um, I actually get people to do that retrospectively. So I wouldn't get you to do it after the 15 minutes. I'd say to people sort of tops an hour and you can kind of reflect on the hour um, if you don't want to use apps and software and stuff. Um, and you can like literally, what did I do in the last hour? Um, and you just, at that moment in time, you just write it down. Um, and they're tracking it for ideally a week. Um, but I know that from a compliance point of view, um, the shorter periods of time can be more accurate. Um, it's, it's about getting accuracy, whatever, whatever's going to work for you. But like literally at the time you just brain dump. And then actually I, <laughs> I like to keep things super simple. Um, I get them to go through with different colored highlighters um, and just highlight the activities and actually put them then into categories. So you'll find that, you know, there's the admin and, and, and general stuff like that. So rather than than labeling it at a, a sort of a higher level, it's just to, to go with the nuts and bolts of what is it I'm doing um, and then label it later um, and then sort it out from there. So um, this works really well if you're looking at getting a virtual assistant in or um, somebody to help you with a particular aspect of your role is to understand, not only are you understanding what you're doing, but you're also understanding how long it's taking you. Um, and then based on um, all the stats that are out there, you know, the capacity that you can expect someone to have, the speed at which you can expect someone to work at, you can know roughly how long, how many hours you're going to need that person for per week, et cetera. That makes lots of sense. You know, I, I I have a rule that I try to follow. My wife thinks I'm crazy, but anything I have to do, I ask this question, how do I get this done without me having to do it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah. I, I, you know, 
a lot of the things that people focus their time on, and I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody else, but uh, uh, they focus their time on when you start tracking it. And that's what I, I, I don't like it. So everybody who's in agreement with me, like, yeah, no, no, I don't like it either. Right. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I don't like weeds in my backyard either. Right. But this, that what will happen is if you don't track your time and you don't do it consistently and you don't put it into practice, just like weeds, they'll just keep coming back. And, you know, cause we're creatures of habit as human beings. And I, what I found is, you know, for six months, I'll not do this. And then all of a sudden I'll find out, Oh, geez, I'm doing this again. Right. So what happened? I'm not tracking my dime. Yeah. So is and, it- and the thing is, is like, I get clients to do it as sense checks. I don't necessarily get them. They don't have to do it all the time. And I, I definitely would recommend looking at software if you are going to be doing it on a, on a long-term basis. But I think, you know, for a short, just an initial snapshot of what you're doing, where, where am I spending my time? Um, the vast majority of clients, we can get that down so that they're at least taking half a day um, over two days. Um, so you get half a day, one day, half a day, another. So you're getting the equivalent of a full day, half a week. And that is quite doable. Um, even most of the time we're looking at putting admin in place, so getting admin support. But in some cases, it has just been smartening up actually what you're doing. Um, you know, time, it, it you expand a task to fit the time. Um, and so then if you then start time blocking, um, so you get clarity. So I get a lot of clients to do days where, you know, you are working on the strategy, then you are working on the implementation within the business, then you are looking at the sort of business development side of stuff. And so when you're splitting it up like that, you can get clarity and you can get it really fit blocked in. And that's the next bit is you track what you're doing and then you put it into your diary. So that at a time that works for you. And that doesn't just include the work stuff. You know, if it is your business and it's quite small business, um, then you you know you're then looking at okay personal time how do I what do I slot in what do I want to be doing what's important to me and you know coming to something with a clear head when you know you have exercised you have worked out um, you you are eating and drinking properly um, you're much more efficient and it's not about increasing productivity so you can do more um, because who wants to do that like where is the reward here if you've done something like track your time so you can free up more time so you can do more work. Like no wonder your brain's screaming, absolutely no way do I want to be doing this. Um, you know, you want to get some sort of reward for this. At the end of the day, you started your own business, for, but, you know, you had your own motivations, um, most of which comes under that there's some element of work-life balance there, some element of being able to do what you want to do. Um, you know, I think we can get quite addicted to working. Um, and so sometimes people say to me, well, I like working, so I don't mind doing it. And it's like, OK, but you're still not giving yourself that time out to come back with a fresh pair of eyes. Um, and so it's building in those different elements. But, you know, once you have understood this is what I'm doing with my time, it's then about arranging it in a way that works for you. And even, to, you know, to the point of if you're a morning person, um, you know, there's all these different um, assessments and stuff you can do to determine what you are if you don't know already. Um, but you know, when am I most productive? When am I most creative? If your business is a creative based business or you need an element in your role to be creative, you want to carve out the time when you are at your most alert. Um, Getting me to be creative first thing in the morning would be really dumb. Um, But like my husband, he's like, he wakes up and he's quite happy to to get on with work and it to be all focused and all creative. And that's his most creative time. You know, my creative time is in the evening. Um, which is quite handy for working with you lot. Um, and, so, <laughs> and so that would be where I'd put my more creative stuff. Um, and so I'd probably look to start later um, and then do more in the evening. Um, but it's working aw- around you and, and where where what's the most effective time to work. So we're speaking with Sarah, jo- <clears throat> Sarah Jolly Jarvis and the company's called Selling Without Sleeves. We're talking about business models. We're talking about how to maximize your time throughout that process of that model to maximize your ROI, not just on your business side, but also on your personal life. Um, And, you know, I'm going to come in and say for the record that all morning people should be shipped off to a island (laughs) and no communication should ever happen with them again. Um, (laughs) That's how you can make the world, you know, you can make things be more productive for longer is let them do their thing in the morning and we'll come in later and do our work our magic. That's yeah, good. but but they always want you to get up early and, and be with them, <laughs> right? That's that's the thing. So. They give in eventually, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, and we're ultimately talking. Uh, we're ultimately talking about growth here, though, right? So we're talking about professional growth in the business. We're talking yeah. about personal growth, and I think a lot of times people, you know, growth is cool. I love growth, right? I mean, that's what I help mm-hmm. companies do. But it's sometimes it's 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 really not needed, right? And and sometimes it's detrimental to the actual. What I have found is detrimental to the actual quality of people's lives. They think, like you said, they're working all the time. They're growing the business, growing the business, growing the business. I, I remember uh, Dave Thomas of a company called Wendy's. <clears throat> I don't know if Wendy's is throughout all of Europe as well, but they were they're like a McDonald's, right? Yeah, so, I think I, I think we had I think we had them. I don't know if we've still got them in the. They used to be on in some bowling alleys, I think. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> but, <laughs> But Dave was extremely successful in that particular business. But I I remember listening to him uh, on a uh, talk with him on there, and and he said, "They said, what's the worst thing you've ever done?" He said, "Build Wendy's." And and the the the, the, the interviewer was going, "Well, why? I mean, you're a, a, a dominant brand, you know. You're like one of the, you know, there's McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's, right? Those are the top three that people come to their mind now." You know, there's five guys in the United States now. There's another one. But the, and he goes, look at me. I'm old. I don't have a life. It was gone. Now I'm out of Wendy's. And what am I going to do? Buy a boat? Like, I have nothing to do. Like, he just, his purpose in life was just all about building that business. But what he, that's what he thought. But what he really yeah. thought was, when he got to that age, was I lost time with my kids. I lost time with my family. I didn't have you know, the ball games or whatever he didn't, you know, wasn't able to do. Mm -hmm. And, and so growth's not always that, that it's not all that it's cracked up to be, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, I mean, how many pair of shoes can a person wear? (laughs) No, ladies, don't be yelling at me or sending me. (laughs) No, Um, there is, there is a definite, there's a cutoff, isn't there? I remember with them, so I had studied economics at, at, at high school and it was always like the backward bending supply curve. So with with, with labor is you'll get to a point where it, the money's not worth it and people would rather have their time back. Um, and then um, I, that always stuck with me because there, there is that, that point where actually there's, there was there's no need, you know, your sort of return, diminishing returns on the amount of money you have um, because it is taking up that time and you, you know, you don't get time back. Right. So I think it's clarity of, of end goal is probably the number one thing that people mm. don't have, which causes them to build a business that gets out from underneath them. I think, I think also it's a bit like when I was at high school, everyone went to university. And so you just go to university. And I think, you know, it takes a lot of effort sometimes to sort of step out of the process that you're being swept along with and think, hey, why am I doing that? Um, And I think it can be the same with the business. Everyone's like growth, growth, growth. Like the amount of people that I've worked with and spoken to who want to make a six figure business. And it's like, I want a six figure business. And I'm like, well, what do you want when you get there? Um, And particularly what I found, I work with a lot of women. um, And what I found is actually that they find it very unfulfilling. They get to that six figures they get and they're just like actually it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Like, <laughs> what did you think it was going? That, like right. what did you think it was going to be? Um, and they're just like you know it didn't. I've kind of done it now, and I think sometimes it's the chase, um, which is a bit like dating. But you know everyone's like sure. you know that they're after they're chasing it, chasing it, and then they get it, and they're like, well that's not even. And you know in six figures we're not talking seven figures, multiple seven figures, six figures. You know it's it's. For, for a lot of people, that's like minimum expectation. But, you know, these people getting there and they're like, actually, you know, I'd rather I, I'd rather have less. I'd rather have less stress. Um, I'd, I'd rather be doing something. A lot of people, it takes you out of your um, in, in your area of expertise. And, and actually, you spend up doing a lot more HR. I speak to a lot of people who are like, you know what? I'm so done with dealing with people's issues as well as customer issues. Um and, it, and it's taken them away from, they actually enjoyed the implementation side of stuff and they're very good at the implementation and everything else is kind of outside their comfort zone and things that they need to learn. So, you know, it is looking at actually, what do I want to do? I remember reading a book by um, Get Rich by Felix, Felix Dennis, Felix Dennis, How to Get Rich. Yeah. Um, and he was based around here, he used to live around here, unfortunately he died. Um, but he was saying that, yeah, 
what I think his estate was worth 500 million when he died. Um, and he was like, in his book, he said, oh, um, I think he made an approximate figure, but he was like, I should have stopped at 47 million. He was like, because after 47 million, it didn't really make a difference. And he talked about, it was very interesting because the book kind of positioned itself as, oh, so if this is what you need to do, if you want to get rich. And then it felt like the more I went on with the book, the more I was like, yeah, you know what? I don't want that level of the, you know, he was talking about the sacrifices he made um, personally in his personal life um, in what he missed out on. Um, and, you know, he ended up with the sort of latter part of his life and and the foundation that he's created since um, spent uh, it all going back into um, forestry and, and tree plantation and that kind of stuff. Um which obviously he was a publishing business. So, um, which I thought, you know, it's quite interesting, but, you know, there is a point at which, you know, that you're not able, you haven't got the time to spend it. Um, And so, you know, what were you wanting? And I think a lot, for a lot of people, children come up um, and I know, you know, family, from my point of view, it's about, you know what, I would, I would settle for less if it means that I get more of that time that money can't buy. Well, I I do a lot of uh, centurion listening. So, you know, the people who make 100 years old plus. And Aww. every one of them says the same thing. I wish I hadn't spent so much time working. I wish I had done more things in my life that I wanted to do, that I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, that I pushed aside. I wish I had uh, hung out with more friends, right? I mean, they say the, they say the same things. It doesn't matter where they're from in the world. It doesn't matter the gender, nothing else. It's the same things over and over and over about, look, I'm at the end. The only regrets I have are the quality of life moments that I didn't live. Right. And so what I have found from that is you define your personal and professional success. Yeah. And you get really clear on that. And then you build your business goals off of that. Then when you fit, hit those business goals, you can redefine your personal level of professional level of success again. But if we don't do that up front, we don't know what to say no to. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. Right. So I've had to do this in my own personal life because as I start to get a little more in years, you know, turning 60 was a milestone. And I was like, okay, house is paid for, cars are paid for, money in the bank, all this stuff. But it's like, what 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 more do I need, right? That that type of thing. And so I had to look at it differently, Sarah. And I think for for our listeners here, if you, if if I would challenge them, you know, based on what you're saying, track your time, track what you're doing, but be clear from the beginning whether you really want to grow it to that level or not. Because I know a lot of business owners that, you know, I know one that had a $200 million company and he was the most miserable person on the planet. He cuts his company back to 50 million. He's extremely happy because he doesn't have all of that stress and things going on. So- you know, when we get to a certain level of, of money coming in, then it's kind of like it's nice because you could do things in style. But the reality is are those things that you have, are they fulfilling you now? Because we all think we have, I don't know, it's 2.36 in the afternoon now. Everybody thinks they have till 3, 3 p.m., right? Like it's a given, but it may not be. So right. yeah. what would you say to people like, okay, I'm listening to this. It kind of makes sense, but I don't really know if can I pull this off. <laughs> <laughs> um well um I'd say to to have a little bit of a step back and think well, okay well why would you want to pull it off I don't think you can pull stuff off when you really don't want them um you know what are your motivations and again you know if you're really against doing something if you're if you're really you know fighting the idea of or tracking your time or or looking at going back why why are you so against that because I think a lot of the time it's because you're avoiding facing up to stuff um can be can be one of the things um and it's like you know you probably know that you're not investing your time as best you could but it's like well all the fun little bits that you appreciate you're like oh they're all going to go if I do that um and so (laughs) so you just don't want to highlight them and I think that's the same with like cutting back or, or looking at where your business is it's like you know where are you wanting to go and why and you know everyone talks about oh you got to know your why and it's like people just say I don't know my why okay well what's your current motivation what currently gets you out of bed um you know that is a good starting point all these things evolve not everyone has everything written in stone about what they want to achieve in their life and you know I think that can be quite good at times because it can allow you to be more flexible um and make the most of the opportunities that do come up 
but having a general idea of, you know, this is what I'd be happy with. This is what I wouldn't be happy with. And, you know, let's face it, when we talk around growth, we always talk around it like, you know, you're going to make more money. Um, but sometimes you can find yourself in a position where you're earning a lot less. Um, and in some cases, you're paying your staff more than what you take home. Um, and that's fine when you've got the bigger picture. Well, it can be fine if you've got the bigger picture of, you know, that business being built up and selling it. Um, but, you know, some businesses are very difficult to sell as a going concern um, in your absence. And, um, you know, some some uh, business formats, they, they don't lend to selling them to somebody else. Um, and so why are you doing that then? Um, you know, if you're in that growth period where you are paying people more than what you're getting yourself, where, where's the end in sight? Where are you going to say, you know what, enough's enough? And I, I, that's what I've done with quite a few clients is we've discussed where are we going to say, you know what, this is, you know, this is enough's enough. Um, we're going to look at something different. We're going to, you know, review it at this stage. Because I think sometimes you can just keep going. Um, you know, we talk around it in the in the in, in England, um, like you know, slog, flogging a dead horse. Um, you know, you can't, you don't want to keep going just because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, because you know, you're you, you don't know what else to do. Um, having something an an idea in place of okay, this can't isn't sustainable for any length of period of time. I don't want to sustain it. So at this stage, we're gonna we're gonna reassess and we're gonna look at what we can do differently. Um, if things haven't worked out is a really sensible thing to do. I've met people who have been waiting for that next big break, that next big deal, and they've been waiting for years and they've been getting themselves more and more into, you know, financial precarious positions um, as they're doing that, waiting for something to happen, which just doesn't come through. Yeah, I think if we look at the, um, if we look at some of the most successful people in the world, eventually they get to a point where they go, eh, I'm cutting back. And they take a different role. I mean, you look at Bill Gates, right? Uh, you look at uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. He stepped down as CEO. We uh, Oprah Winfrey, you know? Yeah. Um, you, you take any, you know, Michelle Obama, right? I mean, whoever in the United States or in Europe or in Africa or wherever, you look at them, they get to a point and they go, hmm, okay, you know what? No. I'm done. I've had enough, right? And I'm going to take a different lifestyle. So... If 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 it's all about making money and it's just all about growth, now you know that's probably easier to say when you have hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. But the reality is that most people don't want to work that hard to ever get that kind of money, anyways. Um, it it would be nice to come in, but it's it's kind of like you know they'd rather win the lottery, but you know. So, but the reality is to get to those levels, it takes a lot of work. I've built hundreds of millions of dollars worth of companies with, with you know, collectively with other people. And it's a lot of work. It really yeah. is. And it takes a lot of dedication and time. Um, so determine what, and you know, water. And it's not all that sex, it's consistency. And it's not all the work that you do actually on a consistent basis. It's not necessarily all the kind of all that sexy stuff that you'd expect, all those decision no. making, those no. discussions. It's it's a lot of it is showing up and consistently doing the same sort of stuff or building on the same sort of stuff. And, you know, that can get really monotonous. Yeah. And, you know, and if you're traveling all over the world and you're never seeing your family, you know, your children grow up, or you're seeing this or that. And you're, you're like, I just I can't even go to a movie because I don't have enough time. Right. <laughs> that that's those are alarm bells going off. Right. So 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 track your time, block your time understand what kind of model you're in, understand the reason what that model is there to do, get clear on that model and, you know, live by that model. And you can always change your mind down the line, right? But, yeah. the, you know, see how it goes. So, Sarah, how do people get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you? I am literally the only Sarah, jo Sarah Jolly Jarvis on the planet. So um, you you can, um, yeah, I'm on Facebook. I'm very active on Facebook. I have my own podcast, um, which is Women's Wealth Podcast. So um, please do check that out. Um, and yet, you know, I am active on social media. The best place is either my podcast or Facebook. Excellent. Thanks for being here, Sarah. I appreciate you being on the CEO Sales Strategies Podcast. You are welcome. Thank you very much for having me. That was fun. I, I really had a good time there. Now, I can tell you, as you could tell on the, on the episode, I'm not a time management type guy. I don't like tracking time. I don't like blocking time. I do it because it's a necessary evil. That's the way I look at it. But a lot of you might look at it as a necessary benefit. 
right? And either way is fine as long as you do it. Because the reality is if you're spending too much of your time in the business, tactically working in the business, you're going to get stuck. There's no way around. Your growth will be stuck or you'll be building a business on your back and it's going to feel heavy and stressful. Now, if you're working strategically and you've got the tactical components working out that they're moving along without you, then you're doing something right in the business. I was just having a conversation with a a friend of mine who owns a multi eight figure company. And he was saying the same thing. He's like, well, I, you know, I get reports on this, but I'm not in the day to day anymore. And I'm managing this whole thing. And sometimes I don't even know if it's being done hundred percent, right. Uh, the way it's supposed to be being done, but I know it's working and I can see it in the numbers that it's working. Uh, and then we could always go back and optimize it. And he goes, well, I guess if we're doing this right now at this level, we must be doing something right because I'm not having to deal with it where, you know, a couple of years prior, he was doing all of it, right? So you can turn your business into anything you want. I learned from a successful entrepreneur who built a $110 million company. He told me one time, he said, the model is what gets people stuck. And I really thought that through. He's like, the model sets you free or the model gets you stuck. Now, what I know is the model gets you stuck if you're not clear on the end point that you want and you don't build a model around that end point. So the first thing that I would recommend is you write down what you truly want, not what you think you want, but just get brutally honest with yourself. What do I want? What do I want professionally? What do I want personally? Whatever it is, that's for you. Some people will say to me, hey, I want to work 15 hours a week and I want to make a million dollars a year. Okay, great. You can build a model for that. Now, in the beginning, you're probably not going to work 15 hours a week. You're probably going to work far more than that, but you know, whatever it might be, maybe you're running a $30 million company and you're like, you know what? I want to run this company, but I don't want to be in the company day to day, but I want to pull money out of that company. You could do that. You've got to just adjust your model in order to get there. You can adjust your model and grow to a 50 or a hundred million dollar company and get there. There are ways to do this is the point, but you got to get clear, must get clear on the beginning point of where you want to be how you want it to be on your personal life and your professional life. Once you're clear there, it's just like having clarity on building a new, say, home. Once you have clarity on that, you can build a blueprint out and you can find people who will build a blueprint. You will find people who can you know, do the job a lot better building the home than you probably could by yourself. So anyways, this is Doug C. Brown. If you like this content and you feel you'd be a good guest, let us know. Reach out to you matter, Y-O-U-M-A-T-T-E-R at CEO sales Say, hey, I would love to talk on this topic. And I think it'd be a great guest. Uh, we'll review what you send and we'll reply back to you. And let's see if we can make that work. If you have a subject matter that you'd want just more content on, like I'm, I'm really looking to figure out this or that, and um, you don't want to be the guest, you want an expert to come in, let us know what that is too, because we have lots of people coming here asking to be on the show. And the more requests we get from you, that means, hey, if your subject matter is amongst these experts, we can pull those experts in and you can get your answer. If you love this podcast, I would love to have you go and give it a five-star review and subscribe. I know it takes a little bit of time, but I'd be so grateful if you would do so. The higher you can uh, bring us up in the rankings, the more exposure we get, the more people we can help. And of course, if you want help with your business, getting yourself or your employees or your company to the top 1% of sales, in other words, you want to be one of the top earners in the world at the top 1% or get your company to the top in its class in revenue in your industry, reach out to me. We do a couple of different things. We do sales revenue growth and optimization around those points for companies. And we teach people how to become the top 1% of earners in their respective market, in their respective part of the world. Just reach out to me at Doug at CEOSalesStrategies.com. You can always check me out at Doug Brown, D-O-U-G-B-R-O-W-N, one, two, three, at LinkedIn. And that's my LinkedIn address. Till next time, go out, sell a lot, sell things profitably, make people happy, play win-win, do yourself a favor, do them a favor, improve their day. Your day will be improved by that. And so on all the other people that we touch as we go through this, playing win-win throughout the day. Till next time, this is Doug C. Brown.
the CEO Sales Strategies Podcast, signing off to your success. Okay, guys, that's great. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to another episode of the CEO Sales Strategies Podcast. What is something that you learned that you could act on today? Don't forget to schedule it now or it may never get forward momentum. If you find our content valuable, please leave a favorable review and let us know what you liked. Please also share this with others if the content will help them. For our show notes, other episodes, and more interesting content and resources, please visit CEO Sales Strategies Podcast.com. See you soon and to your continued success.